Hello everyone! Welcome back to my laboratory. My name is Vel here at Science Her Way, and today we're going to be doing some programming. But not just any programming, we're going to be programming the amazing robot Ozaba. Some of you may remember I did a review and video on it on my channel a little bit earlier through the year. And at the time, I actually didn't know I could program Ozabot on my computer using blocky programming. I only knew at the time of using markers and paper to have Ozabot follow the lines on the paper and do different things like speed up, turn around, turn your lights on and off, and things like that. So I thought, hey, I should do another video, like an update video of Ozabot, and show you guys this awesome, awesome tool. But I'm not doing it alone. No, no, not doing it alone. No, it's not my brother. He's busy doing car things as usual. But today I have a very special guest who will be joining me for many videos to come throughout the year and future. So please, everyone, welcome Dr. Skeleton. So this is Dr. Skeleton, as I said, they will be joining me throughout a lot more of my videos. It's been a little lonely in my videos, and I have no pets, but I have Dr. Skeleton, which is better. So Dr. Skeleton will be joining me and helping me with this programming, as I haven't done that much programming since two years. <laughs> now, I did do a live stream with this, but for those of you who don't want to watch a three-hour live stream, I thought I would go over this content again in a recorded session through multiple videos, not to mention you guys can see what I'm doing better as there should be no lag and the video won't stop and start. So we're going to be programming this. Those of you who have not seen my prior Ozobot video, this is not an egg. It's not an egg. You can't eat it. I wouldn't eat it anyway. This is Ozobot, the bit version. Ozobot is a very tiny robot that you can program either using markers, certain colored markers, on some paper, on a dry wash board, using the app, or, newly found out, on your computer, on their website, using either the Ozoblocky editor or through two games on the website. Currently, there's only two games at the time I'm recording this video. They may release the new game tomorrow for all I know. So this is the Ozobot Bay version. As I said, there's a newer version that's called the Evo. Uh, what I'm doing right here does not matter for the Ozobot Bit or Evo. You can have either one of them. There is one Ozobot that will not work with this. It is the one before the Bit, which is 1.0, I believe, is what it's called. It's not even called a fancy name. It's just Ozobot 1.0. <laughs> so if you want to do this with me, you don't necessarily have to have an Ozobot bit or Evo. If you want to program one of these things, you will need one, an Ozobot bit or Evo. But for those of you who don't have an Ozobot bit or Evo or Ozobot at all, or you're planning to get one but don't have one yet, you can still do these shape tracer games. Just keep in mind that some levels do require you to have an Ozobot bit or Evo to follow along because it turns the simulation off. And in order to see if your code actually works, you have to have one of these. But of course, for the majority of the levels, you have the simulation, which is over here, which you can just test to see if the code runs. So the links will be in the description for Ozobot, for the website, for the games, and for the next thing we're gonna go over, which is the lesson library. The lesson library basically just has some lessons that you can share with your classroom of how to use Ozobot Bit or Evo using the blocky code. Now, I'm not a classroom. It's just me. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. It's just me and Dr. Skeleton here. So because of that, uh, I'm only going to follow about the, fir the first lesson plan. Since it's just me, not to mention, I want to show you guys what it looks like if you guys want to follow along. And it's very helpful for people who have never heard of Ozobot or have never used Ozobot or programming at all. Or people who have done a little bit of programming but haven't done it in several years or months. So I will be looking at it, which is right over here. 
And this is the Shape Tracer 1. So we're doing the first game. And like I said, it will take a couple videos since the duration of the whole lesson is about 45 to 50 minutes. And I'm not trying to record an hour long video because the whole point of this is to show you guys in short, digestible videos instead of three hours of live streaming. So, you can go to the live stream if you want, just a fair warning, the video does stop and start a little bit, so you will miss some parts there, that's why I'm doing this. So, this is just the, the first page is just the overview of what you're going to do. So, it has a link to the, to the games, which is the Shape Tracer, and it will teach you the Ozoblocky language and general programming concepts. So, some of you may know there are different programming languages, like Java, JavaScript, Python, C, C, not C, C, C++, I meant, and C, hashtag, and Ruby, and many others. But this one is just the Blocky version, and Blocky is basically just JavaScript, but formatted just a little differently, so people can understand a little better. It's basically just drag and drop code instead of typing it with the colons and semicolons and things like that. But the general program, but the general programming concepts are generally the same. So both students who have had experience with Blocky or Scratch, which is another website, which is really good. So both students who have had experience with Blocky or Scratch, which is a another programming website, uh, and those who have not will enjoy all levels of the tutorials. So whether you have experience programming or not. All students can do this. This lesson in particular is for grades two and up. Dr. Skeleton and I are clearly not in grade two. We are a little further than that, but like I said, this is really good to get anyone into programming, especially if you've never done it before or if you haven't done it in a while. So the practice will prepare students to create their own programs, load the program into Ozobot, and run the program. This simulated version of Ozobot that is available in the Ozoblocky games is very good at following commands exactly. The real Ozobot is very good at following commands too. However, the real Ozobot may not turn as precisely as the simulated Ozobot. E Evo has a better accuracy. So they're talking about this one. So the Ozobot Evo has better accuracy than the Ozobot bit right here. Still works, it just it turns a little bit when it's supposed to only go straight. <laughs> this is related to the wheels. It is important for students to understand that the real Ozobot will approximate the move, so it's guessing, uh, especially the turns. It will it's approximating the movements, especially the turns. Students program for the robot may need to compensate for this. Can they build something to the program to help Ozobot reach the goal? I don't I don't know, Dr. Skeleton, can we? I don't know. So oops. Scroll past it. So, lesson outline. This one anyway. This document only covers the first uh, the first level and the second level, but there are ten levels in total. After the first two is explained, you're on your own, which is really good because it helps students solve problem solve. So in Shape Tracer 1, that's this over here, students play the tutorial levels 1 through 10 to introduce them to Ozo Blocky and programming concept. Note, levels 4, 7, and 10 are Ozobot-only levels. That just means that you have to actually have one in order to do the programming for that, because you have to test it in real life to see if you did it correctly. The simulation is turned off. But, but all the other lessons outside of 4, 7, and 10, you can use the simulation. So as I was saying earlier that if you want to try this for yourself but don't have an Ozobot, you can do those levels, just certain levels may require you to have an Ozobot. So students must use the Ozobot to test in front of the completed program. The simulation feature is disabled, like I said. So the concept is visual program basics, movement forward, turn or rotate, setting LED colors, loading Ozobot, and running the program. Students will write their own tutorial level a tutorial level 11 in the Ozoblocky editor, which is not going to be in this video. I don't know how many levels we're going to actually do in this video, but we'll check as far as we can in the next video. We will do more. We're just going to do all of them until we get to the last bit, which is, ha, bit, pun for Ozo bit, high five. No, okay. So, yeah, well, the last episode will be going back to the documents and actually trying out the Ozoblocky editor. 
So students should be familiar with care and, and calibration for the OSO, BIT, and EVO, but no prior knowledge of coding is required. So the grade level is two and up. Older students may move more independently through the levels of the tutorials. The tutorials are appropriate for all of us to learn as a blocky programming language. So that's why I was talking about that earlier. So we'll be fine, Dr. Skeleton, but you know, for other students who are maybe in grades two or up, but not like eighth grade, you can still do this too. So the so the groups so the grouping for the students, why I said it's a classroom, is two or three students. So if you would have like five groups of two to three students, just for example. At least I got you as my partner, Dr. Skeleton, for this. So materials is going to be a tablet or computer to access the Ozobot games, which link is right here, and the Ozobot editor, which will be a couple episodes down the road. And you're going to need an Ozobot bit or Evo, one per, one per group, which is two to three students, and blank paper for sketching. Now, I don't have paper or markers because I don't have any markers. We don't use markers a lot at all in my family. And if we did, it was like my childhood, and if we still have them, they're probably at an ache. So we're not gonna have that, but it's okay. We'll be fine if you're stop stop panicking. We'll be fine. So and the topics are gonna be free free movement and light effects. And the oh that's for something that's for this is for later. The duration is 45 to 55 minutes, but the, these videos are only gonna be about 15 to 25 minutes long. So it shouldn't take too many episodes. So if vocabulary vocabulary. Those about bit or evo. Little robot that can follow drawn lines or be programmed using visual codes or through the Ozo blocky programming language. Ozo blocky, a visual editor which allows to create programs by plugging blocks together. The blocks can be used to control Ozobot's behavior like movements, LEDs, etc. Rotate right or left, approximate 90 turns. 90 degree turns, sorry. Rotate slightly right or left, approximate 45 degree turns. And for those who are wondering, a 95 degree turn is going from a straight line vertically to a straight line horizontally. So it's just strictly like this. It's actually how a square is made. A square is made up of four 90 degree angles or lines. And then approximate is kind of like that in-between vertical and horizontal. It's like that in-between. Steps. A unit of movement forward. So even though Ozobot doesn't have any feet, I'm so sorry, no offense, uh, Ozobot has wheels. So y yes, I know you have feet. You can't, you can't, you're not allowed to walk right now, okay? You're not allowed. So the steps are basically, you know, how many times you move forward. And the max at the moment, in from what I saw, is 10. And then, of course, line following. Ozobot's default kept... <laughs> And of course, line following. Most of us default capability of sensing and following lines on paper or digital screens. Like I said, there is a Ozobot app that you can get. If you get it on the tablet or phone, it has to be a decent size for Ozobot to actually sense it and for it to work correctly. I wasn't using my tablet, but my tablet's too small. So you need like a like a like a decent sized tablet. <laughs> and of course, if you have questions about the lessons, you can go ahead and contact Ozobot at this website. Not website, email. All right, so calm, calm down. I know you're excited to get your lessons, but I'm, I'm trying to read here. Calm down. So this is a guided class activity for a level one. Show the class the level one. Demonstrate to the class how Ozobot's image can move forward or back using block from movement. The units of measurements are steps. Show the students how to get and change the LED color using the block from light effects. So of course I had an example here and we're only following two of them and it only has two of them. So we're gonna follow the first one and I, don't, I think we'll be okay without following the second one. What do you think? I think we'll be okay too. And of course it does have you ask your students questions to make sure they understand the concept. So if you have a class or if you are a homeschool teacher I would definitely recommend getting this so you can teach your students or students how to do this. But I'm doing it on my own and we're gonna wing it. That's the second one, not the first one. 
we're, we're going to do the first one with how it tells us to do it. Now, wrong thing. <laughs> now, I have already got it set up since the first two are part of the document or lesson over here. So, don't forget light effects, you would find these set like color, and of course, there are multiple colors to choose from. But of course, in the simulation over here, you have to follow what it says. So, don't go crazy. You calm down. We're not doing blue. No, no, we're not doing blue. It says we have to use green. We can do blue later. We have to use green right now, though. Okay, okay. So you can change it to any color you want, and we're going to choose green. And in simulation here, you can just click Run. But before we do that, how do you move all the butt? We're going to click Movement right here, and there is a movement block right here. There's only one, but as you get p further in the levels, there are more movement blocks and light effects and more stuff. There's more things to do. I know, there's more things to do. I'm so excited. So you grab one of these and you just click and drag and you add it. Now we can't add it because we don't need it because we already have one. I know, I know, it's okay. And we want to move forward, as you can see. We want to move 10 steps. And you can choose slow or fast. Oh no, I thought it was slow or fast. No, slow, medium, fast, or very fast. We'll show them slow first, then we'll choose another. Then we'll choose very fast, okay? Yeah. So you can click run, and this is you simulate it. Here you see it has done it. It says, great job! You got the golden Ozobot! Yes! No. No, Ozobot did not change color. It's, 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 it's screen only. We got the golden Ozobot on screen only. No, it doesn't change color in real life like that. The LED does, but the whole thing in itself won't change color. So you saw, you got the golden Ozobot for solving the level with only two blocks. Now, sometimes you can solve things with more blocks, but generally you want to try to solve things in as as many... F oh. Generally, you want to try to solve things in the least amount of blocks you can. Because it means your code is not as messy, and sometimes if you have more blocks, you may not need that many blocks. Sometimes what you may do in 10 blocks, you may, could, may only need 6 blocks to do it in. So, now that's done. It is done. We can continue on, or, fun bit, we can actually have our Ozobot do it in real life. Now it's not required, but I think it's fun, so we're going to go ahead and load it into Ozobot. And since you guys should be able to see what Ozobot's doing, I think it would just be wrong. Don't don't you? I think it'd just be wrong if we decide to let Ozobot do the code and you guys can't see it. So of course that means that you guys won't be able to see our faces. It would just be Ozobot, but I don't think you guys are complaining. You're going to see a robot move. Who wouldn't want to see a robot move? I'd take that over our face. No, no offense, Dr. Dr. Skeleton. Alright, so now you can see Ozobot bit over here. You can't necessarily see our faces unless we bend down, like, in front of the camera. But you're mostly just going to be watching Ozobot over here. Now you can't see the screen, and I would record my face as well, but the program I'm using doesn't allow me to use two webcams at the same time. So it's just going to be Ozobot for now. So you're going to take your Ozobot, whichever version, Bit or Evo, and you're going to turn it on with the button on the side, and you're going to hold it up to the white Ozobot over here. Now it does flash multiple colors, just a warning, and usually you just have to hold Ozobot up to it, but some recording and my computer is lagging because of that. It's going to be a trial and error to get it to work on my end. Sometimes I have to hold Ozobot really close, really far, or right against the screen. So when Ozobot flickers green, it means that the program is loading and has to stay green throughout the entire loading of the program in order for it to work. As you can see, it's saying that I've had a problem and if it continues, I should restart my browser. I know it's not my browser, so I won't do that, but we're just going to keep trying to get this to work. If at any point Ozobot flashes red through the LED, it means something has gone wrong and you need to try again. If you hold your Ozobot too far, it will not read the flashing lights. Alright, so now that the code is loaded into the Ozobot, you're going to double press the button of your Ozobot, and this makes it run the program. 
And whenever you do it correctly, Ozobot will flash green and a light blue, and then do a 360, which means you've done it correctly. All right, well, I know, I know, we only did. All right, so I think we have time for one more level. I know we didn't do that many levels. We only did two. Dr. Skeleton, don't be sad. We're going to be coming back with more episodes, continuing this. It's just, the video is already a little bit long, but I had to explain what we were doing and what it was, especially for people who have never seen this before. So next episode will be a lot more levels. But let's do this last one over here. So for this level, you have to have Ozobot go straight five blocks, turn right, go straight five more blocks, turn left, and go straight another five blocks. Now, how do I know this? Well, when it comes to this, you're wondering how many steps this Ozobot takes. I find it helpful if you actually count out the squares the light the the line is touching. So one, two, three, four, five. The line is touching here, but it's more so over here, so I'm only counting this one, and it is correct. And then I'm doing the same thing over here, and the same over here. Of course, you don't necessarily have to count all the squares next to the line, because if you look at it, you can kind of guess that the lines are the same length just by looking at it. When you first do it, you may not be sure, but the more you do this kind of stuff, the easier it becomes to say that, hey, that line is the same as this line, it's just rotated another way. So even though the code is already done right here, because I've already done this, we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and walk you step by step. I'm going to walk you through it. Or, Dr. Skeleton, would you like to walk me through it? Oh, I need to walk you through it too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so first, you always set the light color, and here we have it red. Oh, I said we'd do it blue. Okay, so we'll do it blue, but it's not correct. It's red. We'll do it again in red later, but first we'll do it in blue so Dr. Skeleton can see it. So we need to have Ozobot move forward five steps in a slow speed, and we'll actually change this to we'll do it fast. Not very fast, fast. Okay, we'll compromise. So you move forward five, which is about right here, and then we have to turn right, but some of you may be wondering, well, how do I know I'm turning right or left? Well, what I want you to do is take your left hand, first of all, okay? Take your left hand and point it straight up to the ceiling. Now I want you to make your hand go flat on the surface. What do you do? Do you, do you know what we did, Dr. Skeleton? That's right. We turned our hand to the right to turn it down because it's a 90 degree angle. We turned our hand right. Now, if we want to turn left, let's take my other hand here and place it down. You turned your hand left. Your, you take your right hand, that is. You take your right hand and you place it down. You're turning your hand left. You're turning your right hand left. And just so you guys can remember this easier, if you're turning right, that's called clockwise when you're doing it like that. And it's called clockwise because if you imagine the hands on a clock, an analog clock, you, you would be turning your hand from 12 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Technically that's 3, I did too many, but it would be 12, 1, 2, 3. Whenever you see a clock on the wall somewhere, it's always turning that way. That's why it's called clockwise. If you're doing the opposite, if you're going from 12, 11, 10, 9, that's called, that is called counterclockwise because you're going the opposite way and no clock goes that way. It's always 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 11, back to 12. Even if you don't have an analog clock, if you look at your computer's clock or tablet's clock, if you look out throughout the entire day, it's going from 12 to 1, or let's be specific here, it's going from it's going from 12 to 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And it's going all the way back around. So that just helps a little bit. So here we have to turn, say with me, clockwise or right. Then we have to move forward again. And then we have to turn again. 
what do we do here? Obviously, we can't turn right again because then we would just start making a square if we turn again. So we have to turn. That's right, Dr. Skeleton. We have to turn counterclockwise, which is left. So we're going to turn left and then move forward again five steps and hit run. And as you can see, it is done correctly, except for one thing. Do you know what that is, Dr. Skeleton? That's right, it was done in blue, but it wasn't done in red. So we're going to change that, we're going to reset, and redo it in red. Are you happy now you saw it in blue? We didn't do it correctly, but it was done in blue. All right, so we finished it, and now for the for the finishing part, we're going to have Ozobot perform it for you guys. All right, so the code is loaded into Ozobot, and let's look at it. All right, let's do that again. Hooray! It works! So there we go, guys. This video was a little longer than I anticipated, but I had to explain all the basics. So next episode will be a little shorter, but we'll be doing more levels. I know we only did two levels. Sorry about that. I just I need to go over everything and read the document for you guys. So thank you, Dr. Skeleton, for joining me, and thank you, Osabot, for being such a good sport about this. And of course, performing the code perfectly. And shout out to the Ozobot team for allowing me to stream on it a couple weeks ago. And just thank you overall for allowing me to make content on your amazing little robot. I think it's a very powerful tool for kids of all ages to learn how to program this way. I think it could get I think it could get really I think it could really get kids involved in a programming because not only are you just programming, but you can actually see how you're affecting something. You can program and see it work in a robot that actually moves. Alright, so this is gonna be it for me and Dr. Skeleton over here and Ozobot. Next episode, we will be doing more levels. And of course, once we finish Shape Tracer 1, we're going to be doing Shape Tracer 2. And after that, we're going to be doing the Ozoblocky editor. So please leave suggestions for what I should make Ozobot do. What colors, what shapes I should make it do. Maybe like a really crazy square or multiple squares or whichever. And please make sure you hit that like button. Let me know you liked this and you want to see more. Any questions or comments are welcome on this video, even on Twitter as well. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye from me, Ozobot, and Dr. Skeleton. We will see you all in the next episode. Bye!